Now, I, I, have, I have to admit one small thing here. I, I, I stand for it all of our speakers here. Um, this gentleman and I have conversed and stuff, and last year when I did the introduction to beekeeping course, one day course we did last year that led up to this, I used his materials for teaching. And I encourage people to go to his website for beginning beekeeping, middle beekeeping, or advanced beekeeping. Because it's one of the most informative websites out there, and it is bushfarms.com. That's B U S H, like the old president, who he's not related to. <laughs> and F A R M S. And you will find out that he has bees, he has horses, and he does something with something known as the Dakota Bible. Okay? Uh, but go to his B section, and there's just an encyclopedia of knowledge there. There are so many links to click, click through on that thing. You can spend two weeks reading his website alone and watch your brain melt out of your ear, but you'll be smarter and wiser for it. That's bushfarms.com. It's, it's one of the best in the world for information. Yep. He has tried to put up every question you might have. I don't know if he's gotten them all, but he's not pretty darn close. Is he trying to look like him? Uh, no, he's trying to look like me. He's trying to look like me. Mike Bush, your turn. How'd you get the bees? Um, how'd I get in the bees? Well, I, I suppose back in the early 70s, I really wanted to get a piece of land and find it self-sufficient, but I wasn't rich enough to get a piece of land, so I decided one step I could take toward that was to get some bees, because you can keep bees anywhere. You, you can live in an apartment house and have bees. Lots of people have bees, but aren't actually in their yard. They're in somebody else's yard, or they're out. Like right now, I have six bee yards. Well, only one of them's on my property. The other five are on somebody else's property. How far do you drive? At, what's the greatest distance you drive to go your bees? I have one that's 60 miles away, and, and if it was just a question of having a bee yard there, I'd probably not bother. But since the guy's a good friend of mine, he gives me an excuse to go visit him. Otherwise, I'd probably just not have them there. Most, most one, two, three, four. I have five yards counting mine. Well, four yards counting mine. That are within a seven mile radius of my house. That's which, which is awesome. That's bad right. I've got one that's about 20 miles away and one that's 60 miles away. But. So you started out with one hive back in the 70s? Well, sort of. <laughs> um, yeah, back, back in the early 70s, I went into it. I was dirt poor. I, like, actually, I think in 1974, I made $2,300 that year. On, and, and I didn't draw any unemployment or anything. That's what I lived on. I had a wife and two kids, and one of them was born that year. But um, times are better now. But, but uh, I was a carpenter, so lumber was easy enough to come by. So um, actually, I started experimenting with top bar highs back then just because I. Experimenting with what? Top bar high. Top bar high. They are different than your standard box style high, and we'll go over some of the differences on those things in the equipment section. Because I, I can put one together with nothing but a skill saw, a little bit of work, and, and scrap lumber, and. and um, <coughs> So I, I actually started playing around with those back then. I also couldn't afford to buy any bees, so I was doing cutouts to get my bees because I really didn't have any money to buy a package of them. So uh, I don't recommend it, but I, I guess it's probably who I am anyway. I tend to jump in feet first. I didn't know anything about bees, and I couldn't do a cutout. Cut out bees? <laughs> um, cut out the roof bees from somebody's property, like in their wall or in their No! no. They, they ask you, please come remove the bees yeah. from my wall. Gracefully and 
and and I didn't know I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I mean, I I ain't got. But you did it anyway. Yeah, I had, I, all I had was a you know a veil and gloves. I didn't have a jacket like this or anything, and so they were just tearing me up. So do I recommend it? Not necessarily, but that's how I got started. I'm just. You have one more also. Yeah. Lady Nebraska. Oh, okay. Now, now you're you're up to 100 hives this year. Do you sell honey part time? Because I know you have a job. I, I actually haven't harvested any honey in the last two or three years. I've been busy raising queens and, and doing splits, trying to increase. Because, well, I, I'll give you the sequence of events. I suppose let's let's go back to '74 when I started. I did some cutouts and up to two or three hives, and pretty much had two or three hives from there until oh, the late '90s when they all died from varroa mites. Um, in between there, from when I started, I read all the books and I tried to do it all by the book and quickly discovered that I didn't like the way the books did it at all and I quickly did it by the book and started experimenting and doing my own things, which is a lot of what my website is, is the conclusions I came to over all those years. But um, for instance, you know, the books said you had to use a queen excluder and it didn't take me too long to figure out that wasn't working very well because they didn't want to go through it at all. So I just took it off and, you know, put it in my garage and used it once all right. in a while. Let, let me let me give you guys a little hint here. You guys all know what nerds and geeks and stuff are. Usually when we refer to computer guys with the tape glasses and things like that, Michael is the definition of a B geek. Okay, uh, and that's a compliment to the highest order. Okay, Michael, not scientist, but sat there and went through the trials and tribulations and came up with results that worked for him because everything else he tried failed first and stuff. So. Wisdom came because there were a lot of screw-ups. So, you know, the first year, the books convinced me that if I didn't use teramycin, they were all going to die of foul root, and then they were going to come burn my eyes, and it was going to be a horrible disaster. And so, I, I, I caved the first year, I gained teramycin. And by the second year, it just ate at me. It was just wrong. And so, by the second year, I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. So, I didn't. And uh, this is 34 years, what, 30, yeah, 34 years later, 35 years later. I've still never seen any Valbrun in my eyes. Now, if I had as many as D does, I probably would have seen some sooner or later. But I haven't used—I I use nothing. I've treated them with nothing from from basically 1975 until uh, the late 90s when they kept dying from Varroa, and I didn't know what to do. So finally, out of desperation, I started treating—I started using Avastin to treat for Varroa because I couldn't keep them alive anymore. I didn't know what to do, um, and I was really desperate to find something to do. Actually blundered into Rushy Mountain Bee Farm had an advertisement for Small Cell Foundation, and it said in the blurb on the thing, it said for experienced beekeepers only. Well, I read this little thing that just says it'll help with grow up, and for experienced beekeepers only. And I go, well, I kind of feel like I'm an experienced beekeeper. I, you know, I've been keeping them for 28 years at this point, <laughs> but I have no idea what it is I'm supposed to know that would help me use this in any way. I don't, you know, what is it? I don't know what they mean. So I started doing, you know, I think Google, of course, you know, that's how everybody finds the answer to everything now. And you, you go Google it, right? So I Googled small cell, and I'm looking and looking, and, and Dee Lesby's name keeps coming up. So I kind of started <laughs> reading all the stuff she wrote on it, and I finally started getting a grasp of what it was and what was going on and, and what to do. And she was the only person that I knew of at that point in time who claimed they could keep bees alive without treatments. I, I knew of nobody else who claimed they were keeping their bees alive without treatments at that point in time. And here's somebody with a thousand hives and they're still alive and she's not treating them. And I said, you know, you can argue all you want whether there is or isn't any scientific evidence for this, but I do know that every time I did treat my bees, within two years they were all dead. 